intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey there, Star Trek Fleet Command guys and gals. I've got a good one for y'all today because we're going to cover something that actually addresses basically all of you. We don't actually get to do a ton of content that addresses all the players in the game because, well, there's so much like parody, like everywhere. There's just different choices. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about which of these ships scale the best long term, which ones are worth investing in and why. And a quick spoiler, I'm actually going to tell you all three of them. The Talios is one of them. Like, you definitely want to invest in the Talios. You'll see why in a second. The Defiant and the Voyager. Now, we have tons of specialty ships in the game. The reason I'm really highlighting these three is they're different than some of the older ones in that this, all these are made to be G3, G4, and G5 ships. Now, while I have talked about in their individual videos shortcomings they have, there are still valuable reasons for them scaling. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, can I use these instead of other ships in the game? So like, could you use the Defiant and the Voyager and then skip the Baldor or skip a G3 Epic or skip the ISS Jellyfish? And some of those answers are yes. Some of them are no. And a lot of times people just ask the question and we'll answer them on streams. And, you know, people will leave YouTube comments. I'll try to go through YouTube comments and answer them. I'll try to go through the Facebook page and answer them. But what ended up happening, and I've really been bragging about our volunteer team, is John Connor, one of our volunteers on my Discord, put together a fantastic graph to kind of show a lot of the things that I talk about and give you some numbers to back it up. Now, there will be some things I kind of discuss here, but overall, after you watch this video, you'll be able to kind of have a good idea of how strong a ship can be and how valuable it can be to you long-term and which one is the most valuable special ship long-term. And I've already shown it. I'm curious to see who all can guess it. Put in the comments, like right now, we're like a minute in this video. Put in the comments right now, which one you think it is. So first one we're gonna take a look at is this right here. And again, I told you, I'm gonna focus on basically every player in the game. Now, sure, there are not players who are at the, you know, mid thirties yet. And don't worry if you're listening, I'm not trying to ignore y'all. Y'all need to pay attention to this as well. Because in the twenties, you have the same problem, but those ships don't scale as high. For example, the Vidar. Well, that Vidar stops scaling at 35 because you're going to need the Talios. You know, you look at other ships, the Stella. You're expected to kind of com be completed with the Stella loot by the time you get into the 40s. So as you scale out some of those older special ships, you get a lot of newer ones. So what I wanted to do with this, and this is all using base numbers. The premise of this is you're using base value. So we're not counting anybody's research. So this is putting everybody on even footing. If you have research and officers and all this, sure, yours can be higher or lower. And we're also going with one tier for each ops level. Now, before anybody makes a comment, yes, that is technically kind of making our ships weaker to talk about our specialty ships. But for example, if we do the one tier per level, Valdor, I get at 42. So 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. Tier five, tier five, level 46. Now, I expect players to get this at around 42, 43, 44, and not wait till 46. But it is important to note that some of these special ships have level locks, which can limit them, but that doesn't mean that they are bad in terms of long-term. In fact, one of them becomes one of the most important ships in the game and one of the cheapest ships to operate in the game in the 50s. I'm real curious to see how many people have figured that out yet. Uh, very curious, in fact, how many people can deduce which one we're talking about. So let's go back to the graph. And... In this graph, this is the 34 through 45. The premise of this one is to try to cover and give a basic idea of how far your ships are going to take you in terms of how strong they are. I focused on two things in particular, DPR, which is damage per round and hull health per round. So there are also shields per round. Explorers naturally have higher shields. And because explorers have more shields, they tend to have inflated numbers when it comes to power. That doesn't always translate to actually being better in game, but attack definitely does and health definitely does. Shields are important, but they don't have the same importance, they don't have the same gravitas as hull health and DPR. But look on the screen, you can see Ops 42 ships at the very end average DPR lower than the Voyager or the Defiant and right around the same as the Talios. So what this kind of shows you is that the Talios, and we've talked about this, it levels very slowly it feels really really weak to start and in fact a lot of you players who just got the voyager just from a power perspective and a damage perspective 
especially because its firing pattern is super crispy. Like, I do love its firing pattern. It actually starts off pretty strong, especially in the early 40s. You notice the Defiant and the uh, Voyager being very, very good ships. I do want to point out my Defiant. The Defiant is the one that I've personally put the most into. That doesn't mean I think the Defiant is the better of the three in this scenario. I'm not trying to ignore the Titan or the Cerritos. The Titan and Cerritos are significantly weaker than the Voyager, though. And the Franklin A is definitely weaker than all of them. So we're focusing on kind of like these big three. But we will make notes of the others as we go through. The Defiant is the one I've taken at level 46. This is as high as I can go. 16.6 million overall power. You see, I've got a Armada crew on it. I don't have the bottom one maxed out. If I did, we'd be looking at this would be about a 70, 17 million power ship. So in terms of power, you know, it's stronger than my Valdor-ish, depending on what I'm using it for. Very good attack ship, PvP ship, etc. Talios, only tier five, is weaker, but that's just more because I haven't given enough love to Talios. So let's get back on track. I don't want to get too messed up so you see the power levels for 34 real quick now i'm gonna rotate this into the 40s so if you're a low 30s player you're gonna notice that immediately the talios is super strong to start compare that to your ops 34 ships remember this is going tier to tier so ops 34 ships very valuable you can actually have like a tier 7 enterprise at level 34 and that's or level 35 and that's going to be better than a talios is out the dock but base numbers Let's talk about these. See, value-wise. Now, let's go over to our friends over in the land of the 40s. So, this is 40 through 50. Same idea. Now, look at the scaling. Defiant, in terms of DPR, really starting to scale up pretty well. Talio, surprisingly, still a little bit lower in terms of hull health. It is an interceptor. And then at the top, it is climbing in power. But you start seeing the Voyager flatline. The Voyager has an issue where it has two locks, and they're really awkward locks. But at varying points, the Voyager can be like your strongest ship or your weakest ship. So you could have, in theory, uh, be a level 41 player. And this is just telling you in theory, be like 42 at the top. And your Voyager could actually be like tier 6, which is super strong for that level. Which is why we did the one tier per level base value argument. So you can see how it scales naturally. But truthfully, there are advantages to either or. And as you can see here... Defiant definitely starts taking off in the mid 40s, which is something I've talked about a lot. Very, very powerful ship. And whereas the Voyager can actually be the strongest in the early 40s. And then I want to take you to a final image real quick, just to give you a visual right here. Now, this one is critical. Why is it critical? Because even though the Defiant is at the top of the damage creation, look at the hull health. And this is super important. The hull health is actually the Talios, and look at it compared to an Ops 50 Epic ship. Not only is it right there, it's actually better overall than an Ops 50 Epic ship. The Defiant and the Voyager are still scaling well, but they're not as good as some of the big ships. They're not as good as the 46s or 50s, but you actually have the Talios long-term becomes your king of the castle. And here's an example of a max, well, it's not even a max Talios, but this is a player with a tier 11 Talios a 200 million power ship. Now, again, this is not saying that the Voyager and Defiant are bad, but it is nice to know and see where the scalability can take us. Now, these ships all have individual ops levels that can make it a little bit difficult for the leveling process. I can talk about the Voyager. It's only got two ops locks, even though I'm, I hate them. So at level 39, the max you can be is tier three. And tier three versus tier three versus tier three, if we kind of go back to what we were looking at in the first image right here, Look at your 39s. You can see which one's stronger. Voyager by a little, then Defiant, then Talios in terms of hull health and in terms of damage creation, the Talios by far. But they're all locked at tier three. Moving on to the next section. This is where the Voyager gets kind of interesting because the Voyager itself can actually go higher than we have in the base values because it doesn't have as many level locks as the Defiant and the Talios. So, Really interesting. I think at the end, you're going to see this is the big one. This is the big mamma jamma. Defiant lock is 35, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 51, 53, 55. The Talios maxes out at 58, but the Voyager maxes out at 51, I think, where you can actually get it max level. The Voyager can get to its max sooner, but it is overall weaker, whereas the Talios maxes out at level 58, but it's actually damn good. 
at 58 and is actually damn good at 52 and 54. So what we do see is that when it comes to these specialty ships, there's problems in their design that maybe they feel too weak at certain levels, but they also have different scalabilities. I thought this was an interesting topic to kind of cover for y'all because there's always that discussion of, can I invest in these instead of something else? And the truth is, yes, you can. Y'all know that I have got two 42 Uncommon ships. I've got the Valdor at Tier 5 and the Katinga. I don't need that. I've got the Defiant and I've got the Talios. So either of those can do my Borg Solo Armadas, my Dominion Solo Armadas. I would use the Talios in both of those if I needed to in terms of Dominion and Borg. I would not use the Defiant in Borg because it doesn't get the research. But the truth is you actually can use these special ships if you wanted to to skip certain ships. You will limit yourself in total power, but you will get a ship that allows you to scale for the length of kind of your player ship right now. Because max level is 60 at the time I'm making this video. So to answer all your questions, yes, you actually can find viability here depending on the level range for the three most powerful specialty ships in the game right now. Now you still probably wanted to work on the Titan. You still want to work on the Mantis. There are important reasons to work on those ships. You want to work on the Cerritos. Officer sourcing is big. You want to work on the Syndicate XP for Mantis. All that is important and I'm not trying to take away from it. In fact, I actually try to do my Mantis every day because of how valuable it is. But the point I'm making is if you really invest your time into specialty ships, you don't need two epics at level 34. You don't need two uncommons at 42 or need two rares at 46. Now there are many things those ships can do better. Rep grinding is a great example. 246s are definitely the way to go for rep grinding in the game. But generally speaking, hopefully this gives you an answer because not everybody wants to grind 246s and 242s and five special ships all at the same time. And I get that. So hopefully some of these numbers help you out. I will post those graphs in the STFC general channel in my Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord, go ahead and do that. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section down below. If there's other ships you kind of want this type of rundown on, I'm glad to do it. And again, shout out to John who put a lot of the things that I talk into in a visual form. It's nice to see math show that Rev's not an idiot. Live long and prosper, everybody. Stay safe for the Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next Star Trek League of Man video and Star Trek Infinite video. I may or may not be talking with the Paradox community manager right now. <laughs> I'm excited. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.